had a before us 2017 review. A car of real class and charm, the BMW 4 Series based Alpena before us is ready to take on the BMW M4 and Mercedes AMG C63. What is it? At its heart, this is a more powerful Alpina before, available as a coupe or convertible and as a B3S with saloon or touring bodywork. For a tuning house keen to make clear that its job is not to tread on the toes of BMW's M division, the figures make for interesting reading. But before that, a quick look at what's been done. These new S models are not additional to the B3 and B4 range, but replace them. That said, the chassis has been left unchanged, because Alpina says it didn't need changing, so what we're looking at here essentially is a powertrain job. As before, the host unit is BMW's N55 motor but with its block recast to accept Alpina's twin-turbo application. It has a forged steel crank, 10% bigger turbos, 20% more cooling capacity for the water and 35% more capacity for the oil. And again, the sound of the motor is spat out through a Kuropovic exhausts. The automatic transmission is strengthened, has a bigger step between drive and sport modes and offers quicker shifts. This work raises power by 30 bhp to 434 bhp and torque by more than 10% up to 486 pounds foot so. Alpina's hot 3 series and 4 series based models are now more powerful than BMW M's equivalent propositions, and offer a stack more torque. Yes, the M cars are lighter, 78 kg for a 2 pedal M4, which means they just manage to hold a fractional power to weight ratio advantage, but in terms of the arguably more important torque to weight ratio, the Alpinas are a distance ahead. The Alpina is more expensive, but by less than £2,000. It should also be mentioned here that while the Alpinas are automatic only, unlike their M car equivalents, they are available with rear or four wheel drive. The unchanged chassis retains Alpina springs, dampers, and bars and comes with additional front camber relative to the M3 and M4. What's it like? forget that the figures point to a mere 0.1 seconds improvement in 0 to 62 miles per hour time, as traction limitations render such news worse than meaningless. Whereas the before always felt undeniably rapid, the rear wheel drive before us coupe we're driving here is a serious high performance machine. And it's not difficult to see why, it's not the power but that additional torque in the middle of the rev range that provides real-world performance a clear step ahead of its predecessor. The motor's throttle response is almost as good as a normally aspirated unit and its unadulterated sound is actually better than most. I had feared this extra grunt might ask questions the unchanged chassis would struggle to answer, but, on the track at least, which was the only place I was allowed to drive it, it did just fine. It's a softer car than the M4 and there's a price to be paid in body control through very fast corners and over undulations, but it never feels nervous, as an M4 can, and instead of skidding suddenly when power overwhelms grip at the back, it slides beautifully. I expected slap time would still lag some distance behind that of the M4, but it would be interesting to measure the width of the smiles on each driver's face at the end of a stint. Aston Martin Valkyrie revealed in near production form, exclusive pictures. Aston Martin Red Bull's 2.5 million pounds hypercar has extreme aerodynamics, lightweight and more than 1000 bhp. The car's exterior shape is now about 95% finished, according to designers inside the firm's top-secret design center at Gaiden. The essence of the 2.5 million pounds, 1000 bhp plus two-seaters proportions have been known for many months but Nui, revered as the world's greatest creator of Formula One cars, is still finding ways of increasing its aerodynamic downforce as his colleagues finesse details such as headlights, stoplights, scoops and badges. Opinion, why the Valkyrie feels like the future of Aston Martin. 
unprecedented levels of downforce are needed if this road car is to fulfill the promise of Aston boss Andy Palmer that it will lap Silverstone as fast as an F1 car. Sources at Gaydon have already suggested the car will generate up to 4,000 pounds, 1,816 kilograms, of downforce at top speed. Autocar has had exclusive access to a fully detailed, full-sized model of the Valkyrie, shown recently to a small group of customers at the Monaco Grand Prix. The car, pictured here, was recently used as a demonstrator for prospective owners keen to try the Valkyrie's F1 style, raised feet driving position, and to begin deciding the specification of their cars. Flashback the 1970s version of the Aston Martin Valkyrie. Aston Martin and Red Bull Racing expect to start making the plan run of 150 cars late next year, on a schedule to deliver the first Valkyries to customers during 2019. Jockeying for ownership has begun already, after recent advertisements purporting to offer Valkyrie build slots for sale. Palmer made it clear that Aston Martin would do whatever it could to resist such premium market trading. Working together, Aston's designers and Red Bull Racing's Nui have made considerable changes since the first iteration of the Valkyrie was unveiled at Aston's HQ last year. The biggest alteration is a set of new openings between the cockpit and front wheel arches, designed to increase downforce. Aston Martin's designers have had the unusual job of incorporating these slots harmoniously into the Valkyrie's overall styling, to ensure aesthetic quality as well as aerodynamic function. We're around 95% done, said chief designer Miles Nurnberger. Much of what you see from outside is the actual structure of the car which had to be signed off quite early. Non-structural areas are still subject to evolution as Adrian continues finding improvements. Ordinarily, the last thing we'd want is to cut a hole in one of our surfaces, but these new vents work the front wing so much harder that we've found a significant gain in front downforce. They have their own functional beauty, but we've finessed them without harming the way they work. They also work as windows through which owners can view our fabulous wing section front wishbones. The extent to which the Valkyrie's main proportions are shaped in the wind tunnel means it makes a complete break from supercars of the past. A low, two-seat, beetle-backed passenger pod with no rear window sits between two large, full-length Venturi tunnels. They draw air from beneath the car to feed a very prominent rear diffuser. These tunnels are key to the car's aero performance, said Aston design boss Marek Reichmann, who has worked on this project side by side with Nui. Despite their aerodynamic obsession, the Valkyrie's creators are at pains to point out that this car is comfortable and surprisingly spacious, accommodating a wide range of shapes and sizes. Occupants must step over the lower aero structure to gain access through a pair of gull wing doors reminiscent of access to a Le Mans racer, but with larger openings. It has been a tremendous challenge making the interior packaging work, said Aston designer Matt Hill. We've embraced Red Bull's F1 ethos and come at things from a different angle. We've started from a position that seemed impossible and found a way to make it work, fighting for millimeters everywhere. The result of that work is comfortable accommodation for two fairly large adults. The battle has been worth it, said Hill. It has been fantastic watching customers trying the car for size. They love the ritual of getting in, and how it feels behind the wheel. They're genuinely surprised at how the car seems to swallow them. Valkyrie owners will be able to have tailored seats made, if they desire, molded directly to the car's carbon fiber top. Aston is pleased with early reactions to the race-style heat-up driving position, which creates a sense of occasion and allows occupants to be reclined further than normal to create headroom. A four-point harness is standard. The Valkyrie's interior treatment reflects the keenness of Aston's designers to reduce driver distractions. The traditional exterior mirrors are replaced by a rear-facing left and right-hand cameras, whose reduced size also helps cut drag. The lack of a rear window means there's no need for a central mirror. 
All important switch gear is on the steering wheel, which is almost rectangular in shape and has a screen on its central boss showing all vital information. There's a supplementary central screen for minor functions, but minimalist ergonomics is one of the design team's main objectives. Most of the Valkyrie's mechanical package has been decided and is proceeding on plan. The mid-engined car uses a normally aspirated 6.5-liter Cosworth V12, tipped to produce more than 900 bhp, and the hybrid power train, conventional power is augmented by a kinetic energy recovery system, is understood to have delivered 1130 bhp during testing. That means Nui's oft-stated power-to-weight target of 1 horsepower per kilogram should be comfortably reached given that the weight is just over 1,000 kilograms, ready to drive. The V12's power reaches the center lock magnesium wheels through a 7-speed paddle-operated gearbox made by Ricardo, which also builds Bugatti's gearboxes and McLaren's engines. It exhausts through the upper body, Le Mans style. Aston says there will be distinct race and roads versions of the Valkyrie linked by their styling but with big differences in weight and aero downforce. Both will use a unique central carbon fiber tub built by Multimatic, which also builds the structure for the latest Ford GT. Little is known of the suspension design so far, except that it uses long, race-style wishbones at both ends. The obvious challenge is to create a system that can withstand huge downforce at top speed yet provide acceptable low-speed, road car comfort. We want this car to be pure, simple and light, Nui told Autocar. It needs to major on comfort as well as performance. This may be proving Nui's biggest challenge so far. Aston Martin, Andy Palmer, it's a landmark car. Signing off the Valkyrie for production represents a huge milestone, according to Palmer, who describes managing the expectations of Nui, Reichman and production boss David King as the toughest but best challenge to have. Palmer said, the challenge has been working with three very strong-willed people with three very different agendas. Fighting one corner is Adrian, who wants a no-compromise performance car that sets new technical standards. Then there's Marek, who is responsible for ensuring every Aston is as beautiful as it can be, something he's not used to compromising on. And then there's David, who has to make it, to a schedule, to a budget and so on. He has immovable deadlines that the other two constantly try to push. At times, it has been interesting. They have all pushed each other so hard. But it's challenges like these that get you out of bed in the morning. Despite the base car costing around £2.5 million and 150 road and 25 track versions being built, Palmer said the project is unlikely to make money. We'll be lucky if this project washes its face, but that's not why we do it, he said. This is the 1977 Vantage V8 all over again, a landmark car that gives you the poster on the wall effect. Kids will fall in love with it. Dads will talk about it. It's a symbolic car. Aston Martin is achieving so much, and this is the best symbol of all that. We are getting our confidence back, even some swagger, but never arrogance, and what better way to express that confidence than in the Valkyrie, Valkyrie.